In this video, we'll put everything we learned about quantum numbers so far together. But first, let's discuss the last quantum number. Remember how in the last video we said that physicists love putting things in magnetic fields? Well, they did it again. Two scientists, Stern and Gerlach, put a beam of silver atoms through an inhomogeneous magnetic field to see what would happen. They observed where the beam landed and expected the single beam to land in a single spot. But of course, that's not what happened. The single beam split into two distinct parts. To explain their observation of two distinct paths for the atoms, to explain the splitting they saw, they needed to include a new quantum number, the magnetic spin quantum number denoted by m sub s. m sub s for electrons can have one of two distinct values that describes the one of two distinct parts of the split beam, negative one half or plus one half. These m sub s values are independent of the other characteristics of the orbital, which are described by the three other quantum numbers, n, l, and m sub l, that we've already learned about. Even though m sub s is called the magnetic spin quantum number, nothing is actually spinning. The m sub s quantum number simply gives us the last bit of information we need to completely describe an electron wave. It's the last piece of the electron wave puzzle. Consider two electrons. Both are 1s electrons, but one is m sub s equals plus 1 half, and one is m sub s equals negative 1 half. What is true about these electrons? That's right, none of these are true. You absolutely can have two 1s electrons, each with different values of m sub s. But these m sub s values, though they are called the magnetic spin quantum number, do not actually mean that anything is spinning. That's just not true. All that is different about these 1s electrons is that they have different values of m sub s, a fundamental property of the electron wave. So let's put the entire puzzle together and answer the question we keep coming back to. How is it possible that we can have a maximum of 6 2p electrons? In the last video, we learned that a 2p electron can have three different orientations with these m sub l values. Now we know that electrons with each one of these orientations can have one of two m sub s values. So these are all of the different 2p electrons that can exist. Notice that there are six of them. Also notice that these two 2p electrons don't look any different. They're both l equals one, so they're both p orbitals, n equals two, which means they have two total loops, one radial and one nodal plane, and m sub l equals zero, which means they are oriented along the z axis. The only differences are their values of m sub s. So now let's go back to the Pauli exclusion and Aufbau principles. We define the Pauli exclusion principle as saying that no two electron waves can have the same set of four quantum numbers, and we define the Aufbau principle as saying that electrons will always be in the lowest possible energy state that they can be. So let's take helium, which has two electrons, for example. One of the electrons is 1s, n equals 1, l equals 0, and m sub l equals 0. But we're still missing one quantum number, which is the value of the final quantum number for our first electron. For historical reasons, we say that m sub s equals plus 1 half, which is spin up, is the lowest energy configuration. It has something to do with our physicists and their love of those magnetic fields. So our first electron is n equals 1, l equals 0, m sub l equals 0, and m sub s equals plus 1, a spin up 1s electron, the lowest possible energy that an electron wave can be. Again, nothing is spinning. What about the second electron? What would its n, l, and m sub l values be? This other electron would have the same n, l, and m sub l values. This is because the Aufbau principle tells us that electron waves will be the lowest possible energy. But wait, doesn't this violate the Pauli exclusion principle? Don't worry, although the first three quantum numbers of these electrons are the same, these two electrons have different m sub s quantum numbers. So both of them are n equals one, the smallest and lowest possible energy, l equals zero, no nodal planes, so s-shaped, and m sub l equals zero, because a sphere can't have multiple orientations in 3D. And one of them is m sub s equals plus one half, and the other is m sub s equals minus one half. So they have opposite spin numbers. 
The different m sub s values makes it so that, even though the first three quantum numbers are the same for both electrons, the Pauli exclusion principle is not violated and the two electrons have different sets of quantum numbers. It's really obnoxious to have to keep saying all of these quantum numbers, so let's use box diagram notation. This square represents three quantum numbers, n equals 1, l equals 0, and m sub l equals 0, so it's 1s. This other square represents three different quantum numbers, n equals 2, l equals 0, and m sub l equals 0, so it's 2s. We denote that we have a spin up 1s electron by drawing an arrow pointing up. Is it possible to have another upward pointing arrow here? We can't, because this would represent a second electron with the same four quantum numbers, which isn't possible. But a second 1s electron, this time spin down, is exactly what we have in the helium atom. But please just be careful. Electrons aren't arrows, dots, particles, or giraffes, and they certainly are not spinning. Electrons are waves. The box diagram notation with the arrows is an accounting method. It lists the electron waves present in the atom.